I did a video, I believe it was about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, telling you that Tough Enough was a waste of time, and I don't see why any of you were going to bother wasting your time when you knew that it was just going to end up being a waste of time. And I know I most certainly am not going to sit there and waste even more time on the WWE when they don't deserve it. So... I have to say I am not all of that surprised that through two episodes of Tough Enough, the buzz around this show isn't all that great, and the ratings reflect that. The ratings have been not very good. In fact, they've been very, very poor. And this might surprise some of you, but it most certainly doesn't surprise me. So I figured I would come on here and give you 10 reasons why I think Tough Enough's ratings have been bad and why they will continue to be bad. Uh, number one, you've just got to look at a lack of interest in WWE product in general. I mean, look at this week's Raw rating and look at the fact that they averaged less than three and a half million viewers. Less than three and a half million viewers. So people continue to tune out the WWE main product, which is Raw. What the heck makes you think that a secondary show, a complimentary piece like Tough Enough, would in any way, shape, or form draw a strong number. Uh, number two, an oversaturation of the WWE product. If you really think about it, if you're a really hardcore WWE fan, and even if you love what this company does, think about it. Three hours of Raw on Monday night. Then on Tuesday, you've got an hour of Tough Enough. Then on Wednesday, you've got an hour of NXT. Then on Thursday, you've got two hours of SmackDown. That's seven hours of wrestling stretched out over four days. Then when you throw in any special event on a Sunday, that's another three hours dedicated. That's a lot of time spent. That's a lot of WWE product. And as has been referenced by me several times before, it's just too much. Now you're just throwing another piece on the pile. And what happens is if you give too much, too much of a good thing, even though this isn't that much of a good thing, is really a bad thing. And it starts to dilute your overall product. It takes away from other elements of your product because your focus is shifted towards this. And the fans start to get fatigued and they start to get tired of all of this. And it eventually affects their viewing experience for all the WWE product. Uh, number three, I look at this and... This is another example to me similar to Total Divas where you can sit there and talk about it being a reality show to your blue in the freaking face and that it's done to get mainstream exposure. But at the end of the day, as Hogan would say, this show is targeted towards the current audience, just like Total Divas is. You're not growing your, your brand. You're not growing your audience by doing this type of show. You most certainly are not. And the viewership numbers clearly indicate this yet again. If you're sitting there and targeting the audience you already have that is growing smaller by the day, why are you bothering even doing it? Why not do less and focus on doing what you already have better than try to do more and further fatigue an already dwindling fan base, a dwindling audience? This is not the type of thing that's going to have great mainstream type of appeal. It just isn't. And a major reason that this show is lacking in the audience department, even amongst the WWE viewers that are there, is that this show has a major credibility problem. Most of the Tough Enough winners, as I talked about a couple weeks ago, haven't amounted to a damn thing. And the show has pretty much amounted to one incredible, colossal waste of time. And especially when you go to the most recent edition of Tough Enough back in 2011, you want to talk about the epitome of a waste of time. The only person that ended up getting to the WWE main roster out of that show was the person who was eliminated first in Cameron. So the show has a significant credibility problem. You could talk all of this about, oh, they get a $250,000 contract and all that crap. But that's not a number that really jumps out and makes anybody take notice when so many shows will offer half a million or a million dollars as a grand prize. Furthermore, what's the point of spending weeks getting invested in a show knowing that you're never going to see most of these ham and eggers on a WWE television show ever again? This show is not creating stars. It's never really created stars. What makes us think at a time where this company does such a poor job of creating stars on their main brands that they're going to find a way to create a star or two out of Tough Enough. 
And furthermore, when talking about Tough Enough, you know, there is no nostalgia pop for this thing like when it came back in 2011. This is just another of far too many reality shows. You know, WWE is doing multiple reality shows. Every network you turn to has multiple, multiple reality shows. And even in the case of cable television, a lot of times you have reality shows that don't even necessarily tie into the type of demographic you would think that that channel would be pursuing in terms of an audience. They're just out-of-place reality shows. The ultimate of oversaturation in a marketplace. What stands out now, actually, are scripted television shows like The Breaking Bads, like The Walking Deads, like The Game of Thrones over recent years, Sons of Anarchy, what have you. You know, even for me, The Empire. The scripted shows are the ones that stand out because when they're good, they're really good and they most certainly feel good and different from most of what the rest of television is currently, which is a bunch of lazily written, horribly produced reality show crap. And then when talking about this show, number six, you look at the format of it and the production of it. It's just lacking for any type of interesting hook, especially early on in the show. You go back to some of the reality shows that have been successful for an extended period of time. I'll look at an American Idol. Part of the whole deal of their process, especially early on, when they're going to different cities, they get you know some good talents. But the stars of the show then are the people that are bad, and in particular the people that think they're really good, that are just god-awful and terrible, and everybody can have a laugh at their expense. You know, that train wreck kind of element. Well, here with Tough Enough, you basically skipped all of that by doing all of this internet voting ahead of time, and then you did the top 40, and you did little clips here and there about it, but you didn't include it as part of the show. So now you've gotten to where it's 13 people. Most of the people that are going to try and watch the show or might have an interest to watch the show have no clue who the fuck any of these people are. So there is no path or journey story to be told. And you miss out on all the fun things that you can do early, especially when it comes to the train wreck competitors. Those sometimes are the people that end up standing out even more than the people that win. I remember William Hung more than I do the person that won that season of American Idol. You know, when you've got all of these reality shows, far too many of them, and they all kind of blend in, and they're all the same, and they pretty much all suck, and that's the truth of the matter. You know, when your format isn't even in line with the most successful of those reality shows, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And as a result, that's why that show fails to gain traction, fails to gain an audience. And you look at the format, I mean, it's just not pieced together as an entertaining show. I actually watched a portion of the second episode, and I'll get to that in a second, and the maybe total 10 minutes that I watched of it, I was waiting, waiting for an excuse to flip over to another channel. Just waiting for an excuse. Because the format was boring, it was dumb, it was like everything else I've ever fucking seen. And then we get to number seven, which is the lack of main roster exposure and the lack of main roster crossover. When I look at the lack of main roster exposure, you're basically expecting these tough enough people who people don't know from a fucking hole in the wall to stand on their own in this show, and this is completely and totally ridiculous. You're not bringing in people like Chris Jericho to promote uh, tough Enough. You're not bringing in people like Hulk Hogan to promote Tough Enough. You're not having Daniel Bryan make an appearance on Raw to promote Tough Enough. You're not having Paige, one of the judges, promote Tough Enough. You're not having these individuals appear on Raw or SmackDown to promote Tough Enough. You know, maybe tying it into the stipulations of one of the contests. They get an appearance on Raw. They get an appearance on SmackDown. Whatever the case might be. You're not getting these people exposure to your main product. That's not a good idea. That's terrible. This is the type of shit they do with SmackDown, where they'll use SmackDown to promote Raw, but they won't use Raw to promote SmackDown. It makes absolutely no sense. But then you also lack that main roster crossover. Like, I'll be honest, one of the reasons I even bothered to tune in for a few minutes for Tough Enough was I wanted to see Roman Reigns' appearance, and they had pumped it up for a week, and they promoted it for a week, and then he was there for about exactly 30 fucking seconds, and that was it. You know, part of what's going to help this show get over and get an audience is to try and bring some of those three and a half million viewers that you still do have for Raw over to Tough Enough where you're barely getting a million of them 
You should have a guy like Roman Reigns, a more integral part of the show. Or a Seth Rollins, a much more integral part of the show. A John Cena, a much more integral part of the show. What have you. And you're just not doing that. One of the things I did like when they had the old NXT competition was they would pair one of these rookies with a veteran, with a WWE superstar. Maybe that's something that should have been incorporated here because God knows this show needed it. It needed it. But then I look at the way the show was actually constructed in and of itself. To me, you've got the wrong guy hosting. I know a lot of the hardcores will circle jerk to Chris Jericho, but the fact of the matter is a lot of people don't give a fuck about Chris Jericho. Of all the people that you could have host tough enough, this is the guy? The guy that for a lot of WWE fans has mostly been out of sight, out of mind for years now, other than the occasional comeback where he just arrives, loses, and leaves, repeats again? I mean, if you were going to bring this show back, don't you think you would have maybe went down the path of getting Austin to host again? Because at least there's an element of something happening there with Austin. You look forward maybe to Austin sitting there and pooning one of the contestants be like, Well, God damn, kid! Why the hell are you here? Get me a beer! You don't have any of that. Chris Jericho just kind of sits there and his lane is boring as fuck. I mean, you would think if you're going to have a host that you're partially going to build the show around, you would choose a better option than Jericho, honestly. You've got Hogan involved, and whatever anybody can say about Hogan, probably a lot of it true. The fact of the matter is, has much more name recognition, and maybe he would have been a better option to host. But to me, it would have to have been Austin. Or if this is such a big Triple H pet project, and this is so much of Triple H's baby to try and get it off the ground level and try to make it work, how about Triple H freaking host the show? All to me, more compelling options than Chris Jericho. And then you look at the people that are actually judging this. You've got Daniel Bryan, you've got Paige, and you've got Hulk Hogan. I don't have a lot of quarrels with Hulk Hogan being a judge because at the end of the day, as he would say, who would know better how to be a top flight WWE superstar than him? Credibility about. But then you look at Daniel Bryan. Okay, he's playing the nice guy Randy Jackson type of role. So? I mean, is he that type of guy? You know, part of the thing that you would look at for the judges is this would be another avenue to draw people into your show. Well, clearly it's not working with Daniel Bryan, and it's most certainly not working with Paige. And no offense to Paige, but what the fuck has she done to sat th sit there and be one of the judges here on Tough Enough? And then she's trying to act like she's the badass or the hard ass. Where's the fuck is this shit when you're actually on screen performing for WWE? Simon Cowell, you're fucking not. I mean, I don't understand it. To me, much better judges for this would have been a Booker T. I'd have been fine with him, even though he's involved with Joe. He could be one of the judges. Uh, but why not have Trish involved? I know you've got Lita involved as one of the trainers. But instead of having Paige, don't you think Trish would be a much better option? Now, maybe they went to her, and I don't know all this. But don't you think it would have done more to maybe get Trish involved again because she was a part of that last season that was doing much better in the ratings than this season currently is? And then how about this? You want somebody to provide you that Simon Cowell type of shock factor. You want to also find a guy that you can continue to keep in fresh in the minds of people on WWE television in a form when he's not actually on Raw. How about Paul fucking Heyman? That's a guy with a great eye for talent. That's a guy that knows what the hell he's doing. This is a guy with an established history. How much better does a judging trio of Paul Heyman, Trish Stratus, and Booker T sound as opposed to Hulk Hogan, Daniel Bryan, and Paige? You know, I mean, but ultimately, the last reason why Tough Enough's ratings are bad is you just look at the show and look at the people on the show. It's a bunch of fucking bums. That's exactly what the hell it is. The person that got eliminated this week, Alex, said it wasn't even important to know the history of the WWE. And taking out of context or not is a stupid fucking thing to say. These are the type of knuckleheads and idiots that are getting this quarter million dollar type of opportunity. The women are okay, but most certainly none of them stand out above the, cr above the crowd. And none of them, I think, would classify as having that smoking hot type of it factor and personalities lacking all around. And let's not even get to the fellas. I mean, Jesus Christ, ZZ is one of the top 13. Out of all the thousands of entries that you got, this is the 13 best you could come up with? No wonder wrestling's in the fucking shape it's in. Look at the bums that are trying to get in the goddamn business. Out of all the people, these 13, for the most part, uninteresting, non-entertaining bum fucks 
are who are representing the Tough Enough brand and the Tough Enough name. And they wonder why the ratings for this show suck. 